Decentralized finance continues the evolution of digital asset infrastructure toward lightweight forms of global finance. The light cryptocurrency era that underpins this radical experiment in economics, it comes with its own rapidly evolving uses and confusing language. Something I hope to unpack in this channel. Tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou katoa. I'm Jack, and if you're new to this channel, well, so am I. Thanks for tuning in, because in this video, I'll be focusing on Cardano's newly minted shelling release, and with it, a process called State Pool Delegation. A process where you can accumulate ADA, earning income while supporting the operation of the Cardano network. A genuinely decentralized network that doesn't burn through the electricity of a small island nation to solve cryptographic puzzles. I'll be covering Cardano a lot on this channel, but for the first one, I thought I would walk through what staking is and why you should care, and what makes it useful and why it represents the first step toward DeFi on Cardano. In upcoming videos, I'll dig into what makes Cardano a pretty exciting project and what makes it tick. For now, if you're unfamiliar with the project, you can check out a video by Simply Explained. I've linked to it in the description below. Before getting into some of the details, let's do a quick recap of blockchains and their central idea. Wallet software on your laptop or smartphone creates transactions to spend or transfer funds. Full nodes on the network receive the new transactions. These nodes validate the transactions and then sends them on to other peers. Depending on the rules of the block production, the node may produce a new block that aggregates all new transactions together and links to a prior block. Eventually, new blocks propagate through the full nodes in the network and a network-wide consensus forms over which blocks are authoritative. Cardano's blockchain consensus protocol called Ouroboros Prowse is based on the idea of proof of stake. Blockchains like Cardano and Bitcoin use a lottery to randomly decide which full nodes in the network can produce blocks. How that lottery operates in Cardano is fundamentally different to Bitcoin or Ethereum. Both these networks use something called proof of work to pick who can produce a block. Proof of work is like an industrial aluminium smelter, requiring specialized facilities and lots of electricity. While anyone in principle can spend the capital to do this, in principle, a consolidation of miners occur. Proof of stake, on the other hand, is more like a liquid democracy. Stake pool operators, uh, Cardano's equivalent to Bitcoin miners, participate in operating the network, depending on the amount of ADA delegated to them. Roughly, the more ADA state, the better chance of producing a block. ADA is the native cryptocurrency of Cardano, used for, among other things, to pay transaction fees and reward all the state pools operating the network. The goal is to distribute block production amongst the community and around the planet. The term decentralization is often used to describe a blockchain network and implies a broad community runs the system. It is a claim about who controls information flows in the network. It has other technical meanings too, but I'm focusing on the control aspect since this is a critical value proposition of many blockchain projects. Before the Shelley era, the Cardano network operated as a federation. The Cardano Foundation, Emergo, and IOHK all managed nodes on the network's mainnet and controlled block production as a result. While this helps secure the first operation of the system, it isn't ideal from a control and power perspective. The Shelley era promises for decentralized community operation of the main net. Ideally, 1,000 community nodes will make up the core of running the network. Eventually, these community nodes, called stake pools, can be set up and operated by anyone technically competent enough to manage computers connected to the internet and ensure the node performs its protocol obligations. Unlike Bitcoin or Ethereum, you don't need optimized hardware or cheap electricity. However, state pool operators do need to convince the rest of the ADA holders, that's you, to delegate their ADA to them. The Ouroboros protocol breaks up the block production process into epochs. Epochs drive the account for the unit economics of the network's operation. Each epoch lasts for about five days, so there's 73 epochs in a year. Each epoch is made up of time slots that are roughly one to two seconds each. A stake pool, the full nodes in the network, are randomly assigned to be a slot leader able to produce a block at different points within the epoch. If they don't show up in time or accept the task, then they can be penalized by reducing the amount of rewards that they receive and the community standing. The goal is to have the network produce a block approximately every 20 seconds. After each epoch is finished, pool performance, uh, distribution of fees, 
awards and monetary policy awards are calculated. The community as a whole has a vested interest in ensuring control does not collapse into a handful of stake pools. Designing suitable incentives and associated mechanisms to balance out decentralization, security and community participation are tricky. Sustainably operating a stake pool contributes to the public good of the network. We want to protect against attacks, they need to cover their costs. Ideally, they should make a suitable profit and we should all share on the profitable operation of the network. But for the community members not able or willing to run a stake pool, the protocols need to incentivize participation in other ways, and that's what staking does. So what is staking? Think of it like delegating your voting rights to someone else. In this case, the vote is about which stake pools produce blocks and how often during an epoch. Fortunately, the hallmark of Cardano is thorough peer-reviewed research across disciplines. Coupled with solid software engineering, the design objective of the Ouroboros protocol incentive structure is to create a stable equilibrium of eventually 1,000 community-run and selected state pools that through collective action operate the Cardano network in a long-term, sustainable way. Frankly, when you dig into the details, this is just pure awesome. I hope I've created enough to help you understand some of the more essential ideas behind proof of stake and how Cardano implements it. With all that out of the way, in my next video, I take a closer look at actually setting up a wallet, selecting a stake pool, then delegating that wallet to it. Despite a lot of testing in the Shelly testnet and solid attempts to understand performance metrics, mainnet deployment is still early days, and the performance of the stake pools will fluctuate before achieving a stable equilibrium. Don't be too concerned about your staking return at the moment. You can always redelegate to a new pool at any given time. Also, you always have full control of your ADA anyway. Delegating is leaning your voting rights on block production capacity to a stake pool, so you're never ever giving them the spending authority at all. Overall, the Cardano network is well engineered and with the release of the Shelley era able to evolve continually. It is shaping up to be a compelling project, network and community, so please comment on anything that you still find confusing. I'm keen to improve my explanations to make Cardano and DeFi more accessible for a broader group of people so that any feedback that you have is greatly appreciated. Anyway, thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more. Kakete ano oe and I'll see you in the next one.